What is going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to set up chevrons. Now the reason I have this as a sort of separate video is because it actually takes a couple of my other videos and puts them all into one. For example, panner, emission, texture coordinate, and opacity mask. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to grab a chevron. Now, if you go on to Google Chrome, you can usually find something, you could make one yourself, but if you get one like this, there's a big problem. We need it to tile so it actually comes across here and then the rest of it comes here. That way you can actually see it sort of pan across. Without this, it'll be like an independent chevron just going on its low, like on its own as it pans across. So if we actually jump into Photoshop with this, what we will need to do is we'll need to very quickly Move this along here. So I tend to just do it quickly by making that sort of lines just here, but you just can't see it anymore. Duplicate again and then do the reverse where it just goes over. And that should be pretty perfect. And then we can grab our original one and make it so it's relatively central. Now I don't need to make it perfect because uh, it's sort of just shut off, but that should be pretty good. So if we save that out to my desktop, oh, Spot, there you go, spot. And we just pop down our desktop and we call it like Chevron. There we go. Now, closing that down. Good light, see, there you go, and close that down. What I could do is I could drag it in. So I've already got it in because I already had a version of it. So if I right click that and create material, we can start making this. So I'll just call it Chevron Test. Open that up and you'll have your lonesome texture right here now first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pan it so if you hold p left click you'll get your panner node connect that in and we're going to want to make it obviously move to one side i always get it wrong first time so we want to go minus 0.5 that's pretty good now because it's already a black and white material we could just plug that straight into opacity mask click the material go to your blend mode and change it to mask and that should automatically cut it out in this case, it's done it reverse. So what we're going to want to do is hold O on our keyboard and left click and you'll get a one minus. If we write in one minus, you can see it here. What that does is it will invert what you plug into it. So if we plug that into here and plug that into a passive mask, it'll just invert that for you. Now we don't actually want it to be black. So what we can do is if we right click the one minus to start preview, you can see now that part is white. So if we hold Alt and left click on our base color, we'll get rid of that. We could attach this, so we multiply, drag it off and right Malt, throw that in. Hold free and left click to get our free constant, plug that into our B and change that color to whatever you want. So if I want this one to be a nice bright pink, I'll do that and stop, stop previewing that. And we will see we've got this nice pink chevron. But now let's make it glow. What we've got to do is from here, drag that out another multiply node, one left click for a one constant. That's getting a little bit messy, so you can move things around to make it a bit neater. And plug that into your emissive. Now, because it's set to zero, I won't do anything right now. So set that to like four, for example. And we've got these nice glowing chevrons. Now, I want to change one more thing, but I'll do that in just a second. We're going to click apply. And if I grab a plane and I put that somewhere, pop it here and just in the middle, I throw that onto there. We will now have it, uh, you can move it whichever way you want, but we'll just have it going left to right. We've now got our chevron, very cool. Now, what if I wanted to make it a nice long chevron? Now I can either duplicate it out and try to perfectly align it and make it work like that. And now look, you've got this chevron or I could stretch it, the problem with that, so let's say we wanna stretch it three times its value. So if I keep it at a, let's default everything to three, and then I stretch it to nine on that axis, that's now three times the length that the texture is. If I open up the chevron, hold U and left click, we will get a texture coordinate. Plug that into our coordinate, and if you set the U to three, and click apply, you will now get that working perfectly. Now, one thing I want to now add at the end is 
I want to make this so it's a material instance, which we showed in a previous video. So if I open this one up, this one is already a material instance. I can already change this one's color over here to whatever I want. And I can change how much it stretches. But I want to make it all adjustable. So let's go into the one we just made. And start changing them to parameters. So right click one at a time for that one color. Down here with the uh, how emissive strength it is, we can convert that and write E strength. Now you can check, you can nickname them whatever you want. Uh, with the uh, actual tiling, we're going to have to create a multiply node. So M left click and connect that and connect that. Get an append vector. So right click and write append vector and get that. Plug that in. And I've got two one constants. Plug those in. A one constant once again is one and left click. Right click them convert and we'll go U and V or X, Y or whatever nicknames you want to call them. And I'll default one, one, and we'll default this back to one. So now it's a normal, if we click apply, it's going to look stretched again. Like that. But we've got a bunch of parameters now which means i can close this right click and say create me material instance throw that on i'm going to throw it onto here so if you click something you can just drag it onto the details panel now that that's on there we have these options so if we change the emissive strength so i kind of want you to be able to see what they actually are called we've got emissive strength takes it to zero it won't emit light anymore if we change it insane it'll be really really bright if we change U, we'll pull it in. If we change V, we'll duplicate in that way. So if you want like a double one with like lots of arrows, you could do something like that. And we can change its color. And that is how you set up basic chevrons. One last thing for I forget is we need to set up the two sided and show it at the back so just double click on it go into the material and image the material just scroll down to see two side tick that and click apply and now we should be done so i hope you guys enjoyed and i guess you guys next time